Becoming increasingly popular on both large and small screens, the outbreak narrative follows the story of a viral outbreak and then the efforts to contain or neutralize it. Some versions of the outbreak narrative will include terrorists who spread the disease intentionally, and some versions include zombies who also spread the disease intentionally. Through globalization, the world shrinks. And as a result of globalization, our perceptions of time and space have changed. Suddenly, the world feels closer than ever before, and the boundaries feel more porous than ever before. So a viral outbreak in London is a viral outbreak in New York. A viral outbreak in Africa is a viral outbreak in Tokyo. So globalization makes us hyper aware of how close we are to each other and how quickly disease can travel. Conspiracy theories are prevalent because people want to make sense of something. So even if it emphasizes that we are powerless because we're not in charge, it's reassuring to think that someone is in charge, that something is happening for a reason, um, that even if a bad thing has happened, it didn't just happen for no reason, that it happened because it furthered someone's agenda. And so it's a way of trying to make sense of the world. So in contrast to earlier decades, which were very much about fear of the nation being under threat, fear of America being under threat, contemporary threats are about the individual. So rather than America versus the USSR, it's I could get Ebola, I could get AIDS, I am under threat. Also, the newer threats are much more a result of the way that we live our lives, like global warming. Um, viral outbreaks as a result of globalization. So there's this idea that everything is connected, that we are somehow responsible for these bad things that are happening. And also another variation is this feeling that our government can't protect us. So during the Cold War, for instance, it was like the American government versus the Russian government. And now it's like our government can't protect us from global warming, our government can't protect us from HIV. So we as individuals are isolated and alone and unprotected. In contemporary outbreak narratives, the notion of blame has been complicated because we can't just say, oh, the virus came from Africa, or oh, the virus came from China. Now it's like everything's been complicated. Um, we don't have an easy target. We are culpable uh, for, with, for ourselves for the, um, the bad things that have happened because we've brought them upon ourselves through globalization, through destroying the environment and that kind of thing. So we are now culpable. Um, it's not easy to just say, you know, oh, they're the problem. Now it's like, oh, we're the problem. Um, and to quote Walt Kelly, we have met the enemy and he is us. So there are several significant differences between the contemporary zombie and the Haitian zombie. Um, one main difference is that the Haitian zombie was sort of controlled by a voodoo master whereas the contemporary zombie isn't controlled by anyone. They're just kind of brain dead. Another significant difference is starting really after World War II was when you got the idea of the horde of zombies. So rather than there just being one zombie figure, you would suddenly see masses, um, kind of like in World War Z, where you just have these like massive amounts of zombies. Another crucial difference with the contemporary zombie figure is the importance of infection. So rather than the zombie being a dead person who has risen from the dead, you have this idea of a zombie virus and you can become infected. And this really started with 28 Days Later. Um, I, Zombie, the TV show does a really great job of this, but this notion that you can be bitten by a zombie and then you become infected. So you don't even have to die first. And another important quality of the infected zombies is that everything is faster. So these zombies move faster, the transformation happens faster. Um, it now becomes very hard to outrun a contemporary zombie. So viral outbreaks and terrorism both trigger a fear of porous boundaries, this idea that it's impossible to be truly safe. And they also both make people willing to follow along with excessive regulations because they feel like that's going to make them safe.
so there are six key thematic tropes in the outbreak narrative. Um, one thing that you're going to get often is the notion of the necessary accident. And the necessary accident is necessary because it propels the story forward. It heightens the drama. So someone's suit is going to rip. The virus is going to escape the lab in some way. The infected person is going to get out of quarantine. Another um, theme that you're going to get a lot of is the notion of making the invisible visible. So that's where you'll get the microscope, um, in some movies, like an outbreak, you'll get the little animated sequence that actually shows you the virus as it spreads throughout the movie theater, infecting people. Um, but there's this obsession with kind of making the invisible visible. And there's a great sequence in the original Andromeda strain where they just keep clicking the magnification higher until they finally see, you know, Andromeda. Uh, but it's this notion that things we cannot see will kill us. And so we have this kind of fetishization of like, let's make the invisible visible.